good Premiere Pro editors crush the visuals, but their audio sucks. Flat dialogue, inconsistent levels, distracting background noises. Sound familiar? I know. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you three different audio tricks in Premiere Pro to make your audio sound clean, cinematic, and pro with no plugins, no bouncing back and forth between audition, just results. Let's get into it. Internet, welcome back. It's Robert Teagarden here again with another video. Today we are talking about audio inside of Premiere Pro. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. If that's something that you're into, stick around. I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of value out of the channel. 70% of what you see is sound. If you've been around this channel at all, you've heard me say that once or twice, and I really do mean that. As somebody that was a former audio engineer, a musician my entire life, audio plays a significant role in the edits that I put together, and I think it's kind of my unfair advantage. But there was even something I'm going to show you today that I was today years old when I found it out. So let's jump into Premiere. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here we are inside of Premiere Pro, an edit that I wanted to be able to show you guys here. And I think a lot of what people do when they're adjusting audio volumes is that we see this little line right here that we can grab and move it up and down. It's going to adjust the level, more specifically the gain of what that audio region is going to be pumping out levels at. So as you can see, if we start to go up and down, it's increasing or decreasing by the decibel levels at a specific predetermined rate. Now, decibel is just the way in which we measure the volume or the amplitude of what audio levels are. But like I said, there's these predetermined levels that Premiere is actually giving you to kind of increase this. So my first trick that I found really interesting because I like very fine micro adjustments sometimes is that if I click on this line first and then hit command, I can increase or decrease this decibel level by a tenth of a point each individual time rather than these massive swings that it gives you if you let it go. So once again, click on that line and then hit command and move it up and down for 0.1 increments. Really helpful, especially like I said, when I'm fine tuning things. But here's another one. If you don't want to use your mouse or you want to increase the level of something across the board, normalize it is what we call it. I click on that region, I hit G on my keyboard and it's going to give me this audio gain dialog box that allows me to do a few different things. One is set the gain to a constant decibel level. If I want something like that for a particular region, I know sometimes we use that like bass sounding in your voice or where we over extend and distort the vocals. That's a way of doing that by setting a constant gain. I can also adjust the gain by particular decibel levels, usually intervals of three. So three, six, nine, however you want to do it or decrease it by the same. It's a very helpful way of doing that across the board. I use that all the time. Another one that is fantastic is normalizing all peaks or normalizing max peaks. So if you only want your audio levels for that particular region, let's just say it's music or particularly dialogue, and you wanna say, I never want it to exceed negative six dB, well, we can put that normalized max to negative six dB, and it'll decrease, as you can see, that entire region and area to make sure that the peaks, the max, are what we're going to. If I wanna normalize all of these things to negative six, you can see that it does that job there. We actually just normalize it, so you're not gonna see it. So let's make it another one. Let's say normalize it to 10 dB. It cranks those things all the way up, but a great way of making sure that our stuff is good and ready for the level that we need it to or back ourselves out. So that's two, using that audio gain dialog box, making sure that you can adjust things from a fine margin. Now this last tip that I wanted to be able to show you has to do with something I talked about in last week's video when we talked about work spaces. If you go up to the audio workspace and more specifically you go into the audio track mixer up here, you'll be able to see that you can put audio effects on the entire track level. It's not just individual regions. Sometimes we wanna put an effect on e each individual section right here. I know if I go here and we go to effects control, you can see I've got a reverb on this nested section here. If you go back and watch the nested clips video that I put together, I talk all about this. I also did a video on how you use an echo effect to end audio sections, super helpful. I'll link them in the description below. Um, but you can see I have effects on those nested regions. But what if I wanted to apply them 
to the entire track level. I can do that here. So these individual tracks are just dialogue where people were talking through on a mic that was piped into a DJ that we did a capture through. So you can see I have a pretty significant signal chain that's going on here between a compressor, equalizer, vocal cleanup, and a de-esser that's up there. Now being able to have those effects on a track level is pretty cool, but what I did next with this thing submix one down here is a trick that I used when I used to work back in my early audio engineering days working in Pro Tools. Now submixes are basically a way both in live audio and in a studio environment like this where I can route groups of tracks into particular effects through these things called submixes. So what you do here, these particular vocal areas were very, very dry, meaning they didn't have any reverb on them. The reason for this really quickly is that it was just a microphone that was going into a DJ booth and that DJ booth was projected onto speakers. So the environment being outside provided natural reverb, but there was nothing on it in the signal chain as it was going in. And so in the mix, along with the sound effects and the audio that's here, it sounds really dry and it sticks out like a sore thumb. So I wanted to be able to add reverb to to all of those audio regions, but across each individual subgroup. So what you do is you'll hear right here, it just sounds very dry and I'll show you an example of both. So I muted my submix over here that has reverb on it and you'll hear how dry the audio sounds. I created this table over here for you guys and it's a carrier oil that's a very nourishing oil and then you add in. So some super hippie stuff that we're talking about, but you can tell it's very dry. Now if you actually unmute it, listen to the same region again, it'll have a little bit more space to it. I created this table over here for you guys and it's a carrier oil that's a very nourishing oil. And, then and just for dramatic effect, let's open this thing up and increase the wetness in Studio Reverb. You'll hear how that sounds. I created this table over here for you guys and it's a carrier oil that's a very nourishing oil. And okay, so that's why I did it, but it applies as a submix to this vocal area right here too. This, it's about building this community. I, right? I'll add my room size just for dramatic effect. This one. Great outlet for me and a great outlet for nature. We are coming here today to work out our bodies and move, but it's not just about fitness. It's about building this community. So you can hear that there's reverb there and it's a pretty cool technique. So what you do is you go into this secondary area drop down, send assignment section. You hit a drop down, you say create mono or stereo mix, create a 5.1 submix or adaptive submix. For this one, since it's only a single channel, we're gonna create a mono submix. You'll see submix two. And then over here, it creates an additional track submix two that I can layer in all sorts of effects on. And it's a really helpful way of grouping tracks and having them have the exact same effect applied across the entire section of those tracks throughout the entire edit, which is really helpful. It's definitely a way of normalizing effects, keeping them consistent, but applying it once across the entire edit so you don't have to copy and paste all of those things all the time into each individual audio region. So there you go, a bunch of efficiency. It saves you a ton of time and energy and not to mention being able to apply tracks across the entire edit like that makes you look kind of smart and like you know what you're doing. And that kind of counts for a lot. And with that in mind, ladies and germs, that's another video in the can. If you like the video, like the damn video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for posting notifications, and I will see you in the next video when we talk about, I don't know, some cool in Premiere. Maybe I'll do a product review. Maybe I'll tell you a story about a project that I did that never saw the light of day. All just stuff that I'm working on. Stay tuned, we'll see you in the next one, peace.